Matt DiBenedetto and Rackley War Racing split a few weeks early, and it's crunch time for NASCAR. We're still waiting on the 2024 schedule, and the teams are still waiting on a new charter agreement. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. It's been a busy week of NASCAR news. There have been a few stories the past couple of days that I haven't had a chance to address on the show, so consider this episode uh, kind of a catch-up video. As always, if you're new to the channel and you love NASCAR, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We talk racing every single day here on Out of the Groove. Matt DiBenedetto, former NASCAR Cup Series driver, qualified this year for the Craftsman Truck Series playoffs, appears to be headed towards another messy breakup with his current, well, now actually, former team. On Tuesday, Rackley War Racing, the number 25 truck in the Craftsman Truck Series, released this statement. Rackley War has reached a decision to make a driver change for its number 25 NASCAR Truck Series entry for the remaining three events of the 2023 race season, including Talladega, Homestead, Miami, and Phoenix. The team, in its third year as a full-time Truck Series team sponsored by Rackley Roofing Company and War Shocks, will release further details of the transaction once they are finalized. Hmm, in response to this sudden news, Matt Benedetto released his own statement, quote, No words can express the disappointment I'm feeling right now and also not being able to finish the season out. I really want to thank my fans for always being there for me. It means the world to me and I'll always be there for you. Thank you to NASCAR and Craftsman for such an awesome series that I love competing in with all my heart, working on 2024, and will update you all soon. Okay, so this was clearly not a mutual decision. Now, just a few weeks ago, Matt Benedetto announced to the world that he would be exploring new opportunities in 2024. At the time of that announcement, De Benedetto and Rackley War were still competing for the Truck Series Championship together. They qualified for the playoffs. Since then, despite a valiant effort a couple weeks ago at Kansas, they were eliminated in the first round. So now Rackley War is wasting no time putting someone else in their truck. All of this is just so awkward. I mean, Rackley War is a very new truck series team. Their first season was 2021. They signed Matt Benedetto in 2022. He got them their first ever win last season at Talladega. And then this year, he got them their first ever playoff berth. I mentioned he won Talladega last year. This announcement comes just days before this year's Talladega race. You'd think they'd like the defending winner to be driving one of their trucks, right? Apparently not. Matt Benedetto, Rackley War, going their separate ways before the season ends. It just doesn't sit right with me, and I don't know who's to blame. I don't know what went on behind closed doors. I don't know what Matt Benedetto's future looks like. I don't know exactly what Rackley War is planning. It's all just weird. And in the case of Matt Benedetto, this is just the latest chapter in a series of kind of weird departures from teams. I don't think Matt Benedetto has ever had a perfectly clean breakup with a team in his NASCAR career. I mean, go back to 2018 with GoFast. Remember, before the season was over, he announced that he was going to bet on himself. He was leaving GoFast, didn't have a deal for 2019 lined up, but he was confident he could get a better offer elsewhere. I don't think that sat too well with GoFast at the time. Now, De Benedetto did land a ride with Levine Family Racing. They were a Toyota team at the time. Had a couple good runs, but got replaced by Christopher Bell the next season. Found his way over to the Wood Brothers. Paul Menard, if I remember correctly, personally vouched for him. But that relationship didn't end well. I think Matt De Benedetto had convinced himself that with Brad leaving for Roush Fenway Keselowski Racing, De Benedetto would get to stay in the Penske system. Team Penske and the Wood Brothers ultimately didn't feel that way because they promoted Cindric to Cup and then replaced De Benedetto with Harrison Burton. Remember, De Benedetto then released that emotional video on social media where he said, man, this sucks. I don't know. Not sure the Wood Brothers love that either. Now, he's kind of doing the go fast thing again with Rackley War a couple weeks ago saying, hey, I'm in a way, I'm betting on myself. I, I don't have a deal lined up for next year, but I'm exploring opportunities in all series. That's what he said. Again, I have no idea where Matt Benedetto could end up, but I'm afraid he may have a reputation. I don't know what goes on behind closed doors, but every team he's left the past few years, it's been a little chaotic, sometimes a little messy. 
I know Dibby has a loyal, loyal fan base, but I'm not sure that's translated to loyal sponsorship. So I don't know where he lands. I've seen plenty of fans trying to put him in a colleague racing ride and, and maybe that will happen. But I mean, colleague racing let Justin Haley walk away and they replaced him with Daniel Hemrick because he brought sponsorship. That tells me at least on the cup series side, colleague wants someone with sponsorship. I don't think that's Matt Benedetto. Now, maybe he's a candidate for one of their Xfinity series cars. I won't rule that out. But Matt Benedetto's future could go any number of directions. I do hope he lands somewhere because he is better than most current truck series drivers. I think he's better than even most Xfinity series drivers right now. He's talented enough to race in NASCAR. I hope there's a decent team out there willing to give him a shot. As for Rackley War Racing, my gut still tells me that they're freeing up that seat for uh, one of the co-owner, Curtis Sutton's son, Dawson, who I think is about to turn 18 years old. He's won late model races with Rackley roofing on the hood. I would not be surprised if we see him in trucks next year. I don't have any inside information or source on that. It's just, I don't know, it's a gut feel based on everything I can see in front of me. We'll see what happens. But yeah, Matt Benedetto, Rackley War going their separate ways before the season ends. It's just three more races. Y'all couldn't stay together for three more races. Ugh. Anyway, let's move on. NASCAR has continued to delay the release of the 2024 schedule. Uh, earlier this week, Bob Pockers of Fox Sports tweeted this, had hoped the schedule would come this week, but sounds like it will be another couple weeks. And if I say the same thing in a couple weeks, I wouldn't be surprised since I keep saying that. Goodness gracious, more delays? It's September. October is right around the corner. Now that's the earliest we'll get the full schedule that, I'll be honest, that's unacceptable. I understand that this is a very complicated process. You have dozens of tracks represented by multiple companies. You have Fox, you have NBC, you have NASCAR. You have to consider what the race teams are capable of. It's not easy. I get that. The NBC is broadcasting the Summer Olympics next summer. It's complicated. But the 2023 season is almost over. And we still don't have the full 2024 schedule. Like That is unacceptable. It's borderline ridiculous at this point. I saw someone tweeted out that maybe Ticketmaster had leaked that Las Vegas will be at the first weekend in March, but that's not confirmed. Indy Star recently reported that Texas may go from having a September date to a spring date. Again, not confirmed, just rumors. Uh, we keep getting little details, some news, like NASCAR confirmed this week finally that the season opening clash will once again be at the Coliseum. But right now, most of what we have is just rumors. Rumors, rumors, rumors. It's it's the end of September, y'all. Get it together. All hands on deck. This needs to be done. I applaud NASCAR for trying to be bold, trying to take big swings every year, but this is bordering on ridiculous at this point. <sighs> Part of why I'm so heated right now is because the schedule is just one thing. NASCAR is still trying to negotiate the 2025 broadcasting rights. And even more pressing than that, there's still no charter agreement passed this year. Denny Hamlin, who co-owns 2311 Racing, said on his podcast, Actions Detrimental, this week that these are trying times trying to negotiate with NASCAR. You know, we're still in some trying times when it comes with or negotiations with NASCAR. You know, we're, we're only three months and some change away from like our, our charter agreement running out. There needs to be some serious work on that, like in a hurry. To redo our, our charter deal in just three months is, is <laughs> very optimistic. NASCAR looks like a kid who procrastinated all summer and is now suddenly trying to cram for all of their finals all at once. Schedule, charter agreement, TV deal. I think coming into this season, NASCAR hoped all three would be done by now. Instead, we're nearing the end of the season and all are very much incomplete. NASCAR spread too thin. They've got way too many pressing, important things to take care of all at once. It's, it looks like incompetence. Again, all these are very complicated issues, but at the center of all of them is NASCAR. I've been trying to give them the benefit of the doubt, but as the weeks continue to tick on, the months have gone by. It's bordering on ridiculous that none of these three things appear very close to completion. <sighs> it's frustrating, and I'm sure it's even more frustrating for the teams, for the folks who travel every single week, whose livelihoods depend on the next charter or TV agreement. It's very frustrating for everyone involved. I'm sure NASCAR is frustrated. It's, it's not that they're not trying. It's just there's way too much uncertainty out there right now for, I think, anyone in this industry to feel comfortable. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. I want to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. What's your reaction to that quote I shared from 
Denny Hamlin's latest podcast episode. Where do you think Matt DiBenedetto winds up? Uh, what are some tracks that you would like to see on the 2024 calendar? Maybe what are some tracks that you predict will be on the 2024 schedule? Let me know down in the comment section below. That's going to do it for this episode, y'all. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Once again, if you're new to the channel and you love all things NASCAR, you're in the right place. Be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And as always, a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters for your very generous support. Tomorrow, I will be previewing the round of 12, Texas Talladega, the Roval. Many consider this the wild card round of the playoffs. We'll break down all the stats and much, much more tomorrow in that episode. Thank you for watching, y'all. I'll see you then. Have a good one.